Bigger is not always better. In 1945, the first computer, ENIAC, weighed over 30 tons and used 18,000 vacuum tubes. The machine could only run for a few minutes before a tube would burn out. In 1948, transistors replaced vacuum tubes. This resulted in smaller and more reliable computers, but they still cost more than a large house. Starting in the 1960s, transistors were printed on silicon chips. The millions of transistors on one chip could only be seen with a microscope. By 2005, computers had become even smaller, far more powerful, and much less expensive. The key phrase in technology seems to be, smaller is better. With the aid of a light microscope, the kind you used in biology, you can see a nerve cell, which is between 10 and 25 micrometers in diameter, growing on a silicon chip. But downsizing from the micro to the nanometer level, which is one one thousandth of a micrometer, produces some unexpected results. Let's take a closer look at what happens to the properties of graphite, another electrical conductor, as we nanosize it to form a carbon nanotube transistor. The blue lines that you see in the image are carbon nanotubes in a transistor. These tubes are about two nanometers in diameter. How do we produce carbon tubes this small? We can take advantage of carbon's unique bonding in its graphite form. Look at the tip of this pencil. As you write with a pencil, layers of graphite slide off the pencil point onto your paper. Graphite's layered structure is evident under a light microscope, and even more noticeable under a scanning electron microscope. Here is what a single layer of graphite looks like with a scanning force microscope. The sample in this image measures 520 by 520 nanometers. A carbon nanotube is just a single layer of graphite, called graphene, rolled into a cylinder. Don't be fooled by their fragile-looking appearance. These carbon nanotubes have the highest tensile strength of any material ever measured, 100 times stronger than steel, and yet they are very flexible. In fact, a nanotube cable, about half the diameter of a pencil, can lift not one, but 20 full-sized cars. This is the reason that carbon nanotubes with cables stretching 100,000 kilometers are being considered to support a space elevator intended to transport people and cargo between Earth's surface and space. But carbon is not the only element that has different properties when nano-sized. This is how we usually see gold and silver at the macro level, as lustrous metals that are good electrical conductors with relatively high melting points. Large gold beads do not dissolve in toluene and maintain their gold color. But notice that 4 to 5 nanometer gold particles dissolve in this solvent to form a clear red solution. And the color of light reflected and transmitted by these metallic nanoparticles changes with the size of the particle. Medieval artisans made the stained glass in these beautiful windows by embedding light-scattering metal nanoparticles that measured 1 to 10 nanometers in a transparent matrix. The red panes are made of gold nanoparticles, and the yellow ones contain nanoclusters of silver atoms. Let's examine another familiar compound that can be nano-sized. Magnesium oxide, used in the antacid milk of magnesia, is a safe, unreactive, crystalline material. In this commercial product, magnesium oxide forms large cubic crystals that contain billions of magnesium and oxide ions per sample. When nano-sized, the chemical reactivity of magnesium oxide increases, in part because its crystalline shape changes. At the nano level, it is arranged in long fibers with much more surface area than the usual cube shapes. These fibers come together and contain only between 4,000 and 5,000 ions per particle. These nanoparticles can then be used to efficiently absorb a broad range of hazardous chemicals. So what might the future hold for us as we move into the nano age? Let's look ahead to the year 2030. Nano devices will be used to repair tissues, clean blood vessels and airways, and deliver targeted nano samples of pharmaceuticals to treat cancer in specific body tissues. 
Nanoparticles of metals and metallic oxides will be used in environmental cleanup, converting toxic organic chemicals into harmless products. Nanofibers, nanotubes, and nanocrystals will also boost energy storage capabilities beyond measure. Can you think of other ways nanotechnology will change our world? As you take your own NanoLeap, you will learn more about what nanoscience is, what makes nanoparticles so different, and what makes them so important.